Ukrainian boxer Alexander Usyk soon will try to beat world record that is untouchable for more than 20 years. At his time, Evander Holyfield became the only undisputed champion in both the heavyweight and super heavyweight categories, setting a world record. Alexander Usyk aims to replicate this feat, but on this journey, he will face the biggest obstacle of his career, Tyson Fury. Alexander is already a phenomenal boxer, having achieved remarkable success. Alexander Alexandrovich Usyk was born in Simferopol on January 17, 1987, to parents Alexander Anatolievich and Nadezhda Usyk. Interestingly, he shares his birthday with his future idol, Muhammad Ali. Unlike his friend, Vasily Lomachenko, Alex's childhood was not intertwined with boxing, but centered around soccer. Initially, martial arts didn't capture the future champion's interest despite trying his hand at judo, karate, and even folk dances. Notably, in the future, Usyk and Lomachenko would showcase great coordination in folk dances. Usyk initially played in the soccer academy at the Olympic School Reserve, FC Tavria. The young athlete achieved significant success on the soccer field. However, at the age of 15, his switch to boxing shocked many. An incident during a soccer training session led to his decision. After a disagreement where Alex defended himself, he was given an ultimatum by the coach. Apologize or leave the team. Alex chose to leave, marking the beginning of his journey in boxing. The transition to martial arts, however, had a more pragmatic reason. The challenging economic circumstances in the post-Soviet space and the high cost of soccer training influenced Alexander's fate. In 2002, he attended his first boxing training session where he faced a tough sparring partner, Sergei Lapin. The coach, impressed by Alex's character, predicted he could become a champion. Alex's transition to boxing coincided with challenging times prompting him to take on various jobs to support his family. He engaged in farming, herded cattle, and sold fruits, showcasing his work ethic. This resilience and hard work became ingrained in him, crucial attributes in the world of boxing, unsurprisingly. Usyk invested more time in gym training than his peers. Success followed quickly. And in 2005, just three years after starting boxing, Alex won the International Youth Tournament in Budapest. The same year, he participated in the European Youth Championship in Tallinn, securing a silver medal in Hungary. In 2006, competing in the under 75 kg category, he won a bronze medal at the European Championship. And in the semi-heavyweight division, up to 81 kg, he won the Strange Cup in Plovdiv, Bulgaria, earning an Olympic Games license. At the 2008 Olympics, he competed in the heavyweight division, up to 91 kg, equivalent to cruiserweight in professional boxing. He easily defeated Chinese boxer Yusana Niati, but lost to the eventual silver medalist Clement Russo. Despite this, Usyk's transition from heavyweight seemed premature. He returned to cruiserweight division and won the European Championship in Liverpool in 2008, followed by a silver medal at the World Cup in the same year. In the same year, Alex starts training with Vasily Lomachenko's father, Anatoly Lomachenko, who, known for his care for his boxers and a strong desire to turn his son into a champion, earned the affectionate nickname Pupachenko. Interestingly, they would develop a close and friendly relationship with Vasya, Vasily Lomachenko, eventually becoming friends. In 2009, during the World Championship semifinals, Usyk faced Igor Mikonsev in a heated, competitive fight, conceding to him and securing only the bronze. However, in 2011, he claimed the gold at the World Championship Final, defeating Azerbaijani Taimur Mamatov. The subsequent Olympic Games in 2012, held in London, marked another significant chapter. In the quarterfinals, he defeated the Russian Artur Bedabayev, who would also become a future star in world boxing. In the final, 
he finally got the chance to face Clément Russo, securing the gold medal and leaving Russo with the silver. Usyk celebrated with joyful emotions, showcasing his signature folk dance, the Gopak. Unfortunately, the triumph of victory was overshadowed by the untimely death of his father, Alexander Senor, who passed away due to a heart attack a few days before his son's return. Alexander faced a crucial decision regarding his future career, having achieved all possible heights in amateur boxing and with his age, indicating a transition to the professional realm. He couldn't leave for America, adhering to his principles of not abandoning family responsibilities. As a compromise, he entered the semi-professional World Series of Boxing League, newly formed by the Ukrainian team Atamanis, with whom he signed a contract. Unlike traditional amateur boxing, the WSB allows participants to fight without headgear, resembling professional boxing. Moreover, participants can earn money, resembling a professional trampoline. In just five months, Alexander engaged in six fights in the heavyweight category, over 91 could go. His debut in heavyweight and semi-professional boxing was highly successful. He decisively defeated all six opponents, including the British Joseph Joyce and Juan Fua. He secured premature victories against Eric Breesland from Germany, dismantled Magomed Rasul Mejidov representing Uzbekistan, and outclassed Matteo Modugno from Italy without any issues. It was time to make a significant leap and vie for belts in the professional arena. To do so, he signed a contract with the promotional company K2 Promotions. Alexander's professional debut took place on November 9, 2013, against the Mexican Felipe Romero, who had a record of 16 to seven. Despite the opponent's experience, Usyk easily defeated him knocking him out in the fifth round. But Alexander didn't rest for long and quickly stepped into the ring for his second fight. Alex faced a Colombian, Epifanio Mendoza, with more than 50 fights behind his back. In the second, Usyk sent him to the corner. Mendoza was knocked down. In the fourth round, Alex knocked him down again, but the opponent got up and soon after found himself in the corner where Usyk started to destroy him with fast combinations. The ref decided that it was enough. So the third fight in Korea and the first fight not in Ukraine. 26 of April, 2014, Alexander Usyk fights on the undercard of the fight between Vladimir Klitschko and Alex Lipev in the city of Oberhausen, Germany. The opponent of Alexander Usyk is the German Ben Safo who lost first two rounds. In the third round, the speed between the athletes began to look like a race between Toyota Prius versus Ferrari. Safo tried to throw punches, but sloppy punches led to a knockout. The next fight took place in May of the same year. The opponent was the two-time champion of Argentina, Cesar David Carinches. The fight took place at the Odessa Palace. Alex immediately took the center of the ring and made constant pressure on the opponent. After a multiple hit to the body, he slowed and by the third round and after another series of clenched punches, the opponent collapsed to the ground. After that performance, Usyk got his first title shot, fighting for the inaugural regional WBO Intercontinental title. Took place at the Arena Lvov against South African boxer Daniel Brewer, who immediately endured numerous blows from Usyk, demonstrating resilience. But at some point, his chin betrayed him. Usyk knocked him out with left hook and become an international champion. On December 15, 2014, Usyk faced the toughest opponent of his career at the time, Daniel Venter from South Africa. Venter, being 35 years old at the time of their meeting, brought a mature and experienced challenge. Usyk initiated the fight at a moderate pace, sparingly using his left hand. He controlled the distance with strategic footwork and movement, while Venter pressed forward, attempting to engage in familiar patterns and respond to Usyk's attacks. As the fight progressed, Venter's tactics evolved, becoming more aggressive in line with the Ukrainian style. 
Nonetheless, Alexander maintained control, dictating the majority of the exchanges and increasingly activating his offensive outputs. The turning point came in the ninth round when Usyk delivered a powerful left hook to Danielle's skull, followed by a series of blows that led Venter to fall on his knees against the ropes. Usyk successfully defended the WBO title. The next defense was on April 18, 2015, also in Kiev. Alexander's opponent was Andrei Nyazev, who had the series with two consecutive wins. The Russian was getting destroyed by the Ukrainian, whom game plan was working with light punch combinations. By the eighth round, fight looked like pure beatdown. So the ref decided that he had seen enough of Andre's suffering and stopped the beating in a bloody mismatch. Technical knockout victory in the eighth round for Usyk. The Ukrainian aimed for a title fight according to WBO, but after a while, having thought about it, decided to wait and held two fights before challenging for a new title, the first of which was the eighth fight in his pro boxing career. Alex defended his belt against Johnny Muller. Traditionally, without forcing the action at first, Usyk waited for a favorable moment and in the third round, he sent Miller down with a powerful blow to the left side of the head. Johnny decided to continue, but soon fell for the second time, again after a left from Alexander. Miller got up before the final score of the referee, and again, Usyk, without hesitation, immediately went on the attack, destroying the opponent with an unanswered series of punches. In the third round, the beatdown ended with TKO victory of Alexander Usyk. After defending WBO Intercontinental Cruiserweight title, Usyk set his sights on another challenger, Cuban boxer Pedro Rodriguez, with record of 21-1. The fighter was jokingly called the Cuban Bumbear. At the beginning of the fight, Alex decided to give a gift to the Cuban. At the start of the match, he opted not to go on the offensive and allowed his opponent to take the lead. This resulted in the Cuban simply wearing himself out, throwing punches into thin air. Usyk easily blocked the attacking blows from the opponent. As the rounds progressed, the speed of the attacks slowed down. Alexander, on the contrary, activated, but as usual, did not invest a lot of power in blows. He focused on working from different angles. What resulted in knockdown? Rodriguez was knocked down after uppercut from the left. After warming up the opponent and entertaining the audience enough, Usyk finished the case in the seventh round with a series of blows, leaving the opponent at the ropes. Pedro got up on his feet but did not express his desire to continue the fight. After defeating Rodriguez, Alexander secured another defense of Intercontinental Championship, and he became number one contender for WBO Cruiserweight title. And here is the first serious test against the Polish Krzysztof Gwałacki, who won the title by knocking out Mark Hook, with whom Alexander later also met. Krzysztof was undefeated and was a serious opponent the meeting took place on September 17, 2016, in Gdansk, Poland. According to Usyk's plan and the team, they immediately took control of the center of the ring, and Alex was holding the Polish in his pocket, who was trying to exert constant pressure. Głowacki tried to increase this pressure, but not too actively to manage to lock Usyk at the ropes. In the third round, Alexander's advantage grew, and the challenger successfully countered the opponent's blows. During the fight, he suffered a small cut in the left eye. In the fourth, fifth, and sixth rounds, Głowacki finally realized that he could no longer play with his arm and leg speed, and therefore tried to go forward more often with single power blows. Alexander effectively extinguished his blows with the movements from side to side and with punches to the face, although he rarely missed 1-2 combination. In the sixth round, the aggressive Guavaki switched to a more familiar counter-puncher style. However, the increase in efficiency did not benefit him. Usyk, who was more active, reworked the opponent, almost in an amateur style. In the final seconds before the bell, the fighters finally pleased the audience with a spirited exchange. The champion's body defense 
protected him from some of Usyk's attacks. Alexander's best attack took place in the middle of the 11th round, with a series of side blows from both hands shaking the frozen champion. In the 12th, Alexander found himself on the floor after stumbling under the attack of the champion, who managed to box abroad more convincingly. Interestingly, former European champion Grzegorz Proxa, appearing on Polish TV as a leading expert, saw the fight as a draw until the last round. Well, that's the perspective for Polish people. In reality, Usyk convincible won by unanimous decision and become WBO world champion in cruiserweight. Usyk dealt with the first contender on the night of December 18th. However, it was difficult to call the victory ideal. He defeated African Tabiso Chunu on the Pacific coast of America. This was Usyk's debut in the United States. Using methodical actions and not allowing himself to be overestimated, Usyk disappointed the American audience at the beginning of the fight. The audience showed dissatisfaction with the small champion's attacking activity. When Alexander began to apply blows to the opponent, skillfully defending him in the style of a spoiler, his CPD was not the highest. Moreover, Chunu was regularly caught by the Ukrainian on a counterblow, a left hook to the head. Nevertheless, Usyk's effectiveness in attack increased over the course of the rounds, and in the sixth round, Chunu was on the ring floor after uppercut from the left. The fight continued without much spectacle until the ninth round, when the African fell again, eating several tangible blows. And then, in the twelfth round, he was on the canvas for the last time, caught by a left hook to the head. The next fight was again in the United States, and this time, Alex was awaiting his second 12-round test. On April 8, 2017, Alexander Usyk faced off against the American Michael Hunter in a tough bout. In the early rounds, Usyk allowed his opponent to take the lead as Hunter aggressively threw punches, while Usyk focused on counterattacks. It was a tough challenge for the quick-handed Michael, who actively utilized his jab and targeted body shots. The fight unfolded chaotically with varying success. In the middle rounds, Alexander adjusted to an economical pace, slowing down his speed, however. From the fourth, fifth round onward, the champion asserted himself more confidently, effectively countering the spirited challenger. Despite the tense moments, Usyk maintained control working mainly at a medium distance without relying on power punches. Yet, in the second half, Hunter managed to land some significant blows. To seal the deal, Usyk went on the offensive in the 12th round, unleashing a continuous barrage of punches. Michael staggered and swayed, teetering on the brink of a fall several times, but somehow managed to stay on his feet, enduring standing knockdowns. In the end, the American withstood the onslaught without conceding, and Alexander secured an undisputed victory with judges scoring 117 Tahuis 110 on all three cards. On August 26, 2017, the third defense of Alexander Usyk's title was planned in Odessa, but soon there was information about the establishment of a unique tournament in the first heavyweight World Boxing Super Series, or Muhammad Ali Cup. Usyk's team gave preference to the tournament. Applications for participation, in addition to Usyk, were submitted by three other world champions, Murat Gassiev, Marius Briedis, and Junior Dartikos, along with other top boxers of the division. On June 23rd, it was announced that on July 8th, a selection of the final four pairs of participants would be held in Monaco. Alex fought in the quarterfinals against the German of Bosnian origin, Marco Huck. Before the fight, Marco allowed himself to be rude and provoked Alex in every possible way. In trash talk, he used personal insults, crossing all the boundaries of the allowed. The fight took place in Berlin on September 4, 2017, at the famous Max Schmeling Stadium. Named after the legend of German boxing, from the first minutes, the Ukrainian took the advantage, throwing different combinations from different angles. Huck 
responded only with his usual falls, holding and working on the kidneys and the back of the head. At the end of the third round, Huck was caught with an uppercut and driven away with a series against the ropes. The German was rocked, but the bell intervened. Once again, the combination rocked Marco in the fourth round. Although before that, the challenger hit the Ukrainian hard for the first time. From the fifth round, Usyk began to suffocate Huck even more, increasing the pace of aggressive attacks. In the sixth and seventh rounds, Usyk slowed down a bit to regain strength, but this did not help the German boxer. In the eighth round, Alexander, who dominated the ring, slipped and fell, frustrated that nothing was working out. Huck ran up and hit the opponent on the floor. Marco was punished with a penalty point. The beating continued for ninth round. The referee stopped the match in the last minute of the 10th round, declaring a technical knockout in favor of Usyk for the most impressive victory in his career. In the semifinal, he faced the toughest fight at that moment, as Alexander Usyk himself admits in the post-match interview. Alex's opponent was Latvian Maris Bredis, a pupil of Vasily Chernigov, a legendary coach from Riga, who taught many master amateurs. The fight took place on January 28, 2018, in Arena Riga, Latvia, in Briedis' homeland. In the first rounds, Maris, sitting on his rear leg as Marquez once did in the fight with Pacquiao, forced Alexander to reach and start the attack from too far away. This allows the Latvian to successfully act in response, using both right punches and left hooks. Maris minimizes the punches missed from the Ukrainian's right by using body movements. Until the sixth round, while Maris had a lot of strength, the fight was going with variable success, about 50 to 50. Maris was very dangerous, known for his heavy knockout punch, but starting from the seventh, eighth round, as soon as the Latvian boxer began to tire, Usyk increased the tempo and took the initiative. Usyk worked a lot with his lead hand, and it was evident that due to the bank, rounds were left behind Usyk. As a result, the audience saw high-quality boxing, a true champion's fight that they would want to watch again. In a very competitive fight, Alexander Usyk secured a victory without overwhelming advantage, but nonetheless without a doubt and without raising questions. In the final, Usyk faced Murat Gassiev, and many predicted Alexander's defeat by knockout. The fight for the Super Series champion title took place on July 21st, 2018, in Moscow. The intrigue did not materialize. The Ukrainian Adaman imposed his game in the first half of the fight, and starting from the sixth round, according to the uh, his classic style, he increased the tempo and began to work with long series of punches. After that, the whole boxing of Gassiev reminded of an attempt to catch with lucky punch. Mura sometimes connected, but not enough to surprise the Ukrainian. In the 10th round, Usyk felt very comfortable. Gassiev once caught him with right hand, but overall, the Russian just went forward and missed. In the last rounds, Gassiev's actions even showed a slight desperation. He sometimes landed punches, but Usyk did not slow down, finishing the fight with a beautiful series of blows and even allowing himself a little showboating without humiliating the opponent. Usyk actually declassified Gassiev, not allowing him to land any successful combination throughout the fight. After the final bell, they warmly greeted each other. Soon after the fight with Gassiev, Usyk was awarded the title of Super Champion according to WWBO. This gave him the right to fight the champion according to the version in the higher category. Usyk expressed his desire to have a fight with the British Tony Bellew. After the negotiation process, Usyk decided to sign a promotional contract with Eddie Hearn and the Matchroom Boxing Company, which also represented the interests of Tony Bellew. K2 remained a promoter in an equal share as well as a Matchroom Boxing. As a result, the fight took place on November 10th in Manchester at the Manchester Arena. Usyk traditionally gained momentum during the fight due to movement, successful actions in defense and counterattacks. But it was worth adding Alexander started working 
as the first number, as the initiative became more and more in his favor. In the eighth round, Usyk went forward even more decisively, literally terrorizing the Briton with blows from a distance, and eventually knocked him out with a left hook. After the fight, Bellu highly appreciated Usyk's skill and said that he would root for him, calling on his fans to follow the career of the Ukrainian champion. After the victory over the British fighter, Alexander mentioned that he was aiming for the Royal Division and expressed a desire to fight Anthony Joshua. The hard work began to switch to heavyweight, posing a significant challenge for the Ukrainian fitness team. The main advantage of Usyk is speed and endurance, but with the increase in weight, these qualities will undoubtedly be affected. It is necessary to maintain a balance between quality, weight gain, and preserving the top condition of the athlete. The first fight was planned against a good but quite strong boxer, Carlos Takam. The fight was scheduled for May 25, 2019. Carlos Takam is a French fighter of Cameroonian origin. He had lost to Povetkin, Joshua, and Chisora, but against lesser caliber boxers, he showed quite worthy fights. Unfortunately, due to an injury, this fight did not take place. A new opponent was found, named Tyrone Spong. Fans of the good-hearted K-1 fights remember Spong for his uncompromising battle. The boxing match with Usyk promised to be a great event, quite predictable due to the higher boxing class of the Ukrainian. But in any case, it was a significant event for the audience. However, Tyrone failed the doping test, and he was replaced by a quick-handed replacement from Chaz Weatherspoon better known as the brother of the legendary boxer Tim Weatherspoon. The Ukrainian started the fight with a fast movement, circling around Weatherspoon and jabbing him, feeling himself as a full-fledged heavyweight. The American did not back down and pressured a little, occasionally connecting a right straight punch. However, both fighters had no serious hits at this point. Wusik worked minimally on the body in the second round landing a good right hook behind the ear on Chaz. The third round was marked by a quick jab from Usyk. He began to actively engage in the attack, becoming much more persistent and aggressive. In the sixth and seventh rounds, it got worse for Chaz, as Alexander started to land more hits, and the referee was ready to stop the fight a couple of times, but he held back. The finish came in the break before the eighth round, when the American corner withdrew him from the fight. Still, the real test in heavyweight for Usyk was on October 12, 2019. The fight with Derek Chisora was a test of the Ukrainian's ability to embrace his new heavyweight status. The fight did not go as smoothly as many experts would have liked, but opinions were divided. A good portion believed that it would be much more convenient for Usyk to box with technical opponents than with heavy straight-line sluggers. Usyk secured the victory, but the questions after the fight outnumbered the answers. Usyk often absorbed hits. Derek periodically eased the pressure, which Usyk exploited effectively. However, whenever Chisora regained his old intensity, he, once again, asserted dominance. As often happens in Alexander's fights, the pressure diminishes towards the middle of the bout. In the later rounds, Usyk starts to reveal his skills and take control. In the seventh round, Chisora almost went down, and although Alexander rushed for a quick finish, the Briton managed to survive. For the second time, it seemed like he was on the verge of collapse from fatigue in the championship rounds. The judges scored it in favor of Usyk, the expected victory didn't provide the clear answer Usyk sought regarding his path to achieving the coveted goal of becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion. The Usyk versus Chisora bout left many in the boxing community awaiting more clarity on his ambitions. However, despite the criticism and doubts about Usyk's performance against Chisora, the next challenge on his path was the heavyweight champion, Anthony Joshua. The bout took place on September 25, 2021, 
Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, London, England, and was one of the biggest boxing event in history of UK. It seemed like magnitude of the fight will affect the Ukrainian. Joshua appeared as a confident favorite in the matchup, as he was even bigger than Chisora, athletic, faster, and younger. It seemed that Usyk would become the next victim of the biggest star in the heavyweight division. But from the very first second, Usyk showcased superb technique and strategy despite being an underdog due to a size disadvantage. Usyk avoided dangerous situations, utilized his agility, and landed precise strikes to control the course of the fight. It looked like middleweight versus super heavyweight. Alexander was way faster in every aspect. The match ended with a unanimous decision in favor of Usyk, making him the WBA, IBF, and WBO heavyweight champion. Despite confident victory, the rematch was set because of superstar status of Anthony Joshua. In the rematch, held on March 26, 2022, roles reversed, and this time, Joshua was the underdog. Usyk continued to display outstanding technical skills, effectively evading Joshua's attacks and controlling the distance. The fight concluded with a unanimous decision in favor of Usyk, emphasizing his dominance in the heavyweight division and raising questions about Joshua's future. In this weight class, after such convincing victories over the giant Joshua, the only fights that fans wanted to see were the matchups against Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. However, both of them avoided a showdown with the Ukrainian. That's why he accepted the challenge from the young prospect Dubois. Many viewed Daniel Dubois as just another victim for the Ukrainian, thinking that Usyk took the fight to stay active. The bout took place in Poland, as Usyk wanted to support fellow Ukrainians in the country that was at war. Many Ukrainians living in Poland came to watch the fight. As expected, Usyk performed well, showcasing speed and tactical superiority over his opponent. However, Dubois managed to land a few solid body shots on Alexander, and it was evident that Usyk felt those punches. There was even a moment when many thought Dubois sent Usyk to the canvas with a body shot, but replays showed that the punch was below the belt. To this day, there's still debate about where the punch landed. However, in the fight, the referee ruled it as a low blow, giving Usyk time to recover. After that, the Ukrainian started working much more actively, eventually finishing his opponent. It brought joy to his compatriots, who desperately needed support at that time. After Alexander Usyk achieved the impossible, he has one more step to replicate the world record of Evander Holyfield, holding all champion titles in two weight classes. Standing in his way is the most dominant heavyweight of recent years, the undefeated WBC champion Tyson Fury. What are your thoughts on whether Alexander Usyk will be able to defeat the Gypsy Giant and become undisputed heavyweight champion?